μεγάλη μας τιμή και χαρά υποδεχόμαστε ε, εδώ στο στούντιο του κάθε μέρα, άλλη μέρα και του Αλφα Κύπρου, ε, την κυρία Ιμπραχήμ. Ε, κυρία Ιμπραχήμ, πότε ξεκινήσατε, με ποια αφορμή ε, να υπερασπίζεστε στην Ιγυρία, στη χώρα σας, γυναίκες που κινδύνευαν ε, από τον νόμο της Σαρία, είτε με λιθοβολισμό, είτε με ακροτηριασμό ή άλλη ε, ανάλογη σκληρή τιμωρία. I came into the matter in 1999 when I defended the first case of a girl called Baria in a village called Magazu. I have defended over 150 cases, uh, mainly women sentenced to die by stoning and children sentenced to have their limbs amputated under the new Sharia. Why did I do it? I became educated by accident and I became a lawyer by accident. And I guess I went to teach at Harvard University in the United States by accident. Uh, but in my accidental life, I always found a niche, a calling, a mission. And maybe in 1999, that was my mission. Σας έτυχε ποτέ να δείτε μία εκτέλεση γυναίκας διαλυθοβολισμού ή ακροτηριασμού κάποιου κλέφτη ή ανάλογη α, σκληρή απάνθρωπη τιμωρία α, στην Ιγυρία. I have seen a limb amputated of a young man that was alleged to have stolen. Um, so the new offenses may be for the purpose of the audience uh, are five. If you steal, you have your limbs amputated. If you drink alcohol, you'll be flogged 100 times in public. If you commit adultery, you'll be stoned to death. If you have any semblance of marriage. If you have never been married, you'll be flogged also 100 times publicly. Now, if you commit what they call hiraba, which is you steal and you kill, like arm robbery with arm, you will be crucified. And if you change your religion, that is apostasy, you will also be stoned. So these are the five major offenses introduced in the 1999 New Sharia, okay? And when we came in to defend those cases, uh, those were the offenses that we had to defend. <laughs> Όλα αυτά τα χρόνια που αναλαμβάνετε τέτοιε υποθέσει, υπερασπιζόμενοι κυρίω γυναίκε, έχετε απειληθεί, έχετε φοβηθεί, έχουν προσπαθήσει να σα σταματήσουν. I have received threat and it is in the media. And what happened was that I was. Um, somebody came from BBC and asked me a question in the local language. And he said to me, Is stoning to death in the Quran? And my answer was. I don't think so. So it was played in the local media, but my language, which is Hausa, which is local language, is listened in not only in northern Nigeria, it's listened across countries like Ghana, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, our six western region. So it was broadcast across the West African region. And the mullahs, the Islamic uh, mullahs, decided to answer me with the same media and they say I was anti-Islam and I was anti-Sharia and the West is giving me money to destroy Islam. So I felt the need to go and visit with the mullahs and to explain what I was doing because I wasn't paid. I was paying my client to go back home. So I wanted to explain to the mullahs my purpose of doing what I was doing. But I called the reporter and I said, I want to you to introduce me to the people you also spoke and he said, you don't want to do that because you heard what they say. And it's apostasy and you also can be stoned. And I said, no, I really want to. So after I insist, he said, I will introduce you, but I will not be responsible for you. And he was kind to introduce me. And the mullahs decided to see me. And they wanted to see me, wanted to see me in a mox where they pray. And there were eight of them in a big hole, big mocks. 
and they were sitting at the end and with all big turbans, long beard. I, I think I'm well dressed, but I'm not dressed to enter the mocks. So I was totally covered with my body. And I walked in with my files. Then I had 47 cases photocopied. I saw them at the end and I decided to walk toward them. But halfway in the hall, there was a cheer. I saw the cheer, but I didn't go toward the cheer. I walked toward them. And while I was going toward them, I decided to kneel down and to sit on the floor. And they chorus at the same time. They say, stand up, go sit on the chair. And I said to them, and this is my culture, and this is very important. How can I, Hawa, your daughter, sit on a chair when you, my fathers, are sitting on a chair? This is my culture. This is my dynamic. When my fathers sit on the chair, I don't sit on the chair. I didn't come in as a lawyer. I came in as their daughter. So while I was looking at the floor, because the culture doesn't allow me to make eye contact with men, my, my fathers, I have to always look down on the floor. I said to them, I cannot sit there. However, I didn't speak about what the radio said. I told the Islamic mullahs that I was a foolish lawyer. I'm a city lawyer, that I have been doing things outside to help women and children, but I am not sure I'm getting it right. And I came to them because I want them to give me wisdom. I want them to give me knowledge. I want them to help me to go out there to do good. Now remember, it's not the same conversation. The conversation that brought me was they have attacked my credibility. But within my culture, you don't confront the men, you don't get results. Okay? So I decided to take the posture I would have taken because I wanted a long-term result. And they were able to listen to me. And I was there for some time. But they said to me two things before I left the mocks. They said they would not publicly accept me and applaud me for what I do. But they will also not be against me. And that is the biggest security statement I wanted at that moment because I need to go back to court and do my cases. It took me five years. As a woman, I cannot speak in court. I had to wait five years for them to allow me to speak. Πόσο σκληρό είναι για μια γυναίκα να βλέπει τον ακροτηριασμό του χεριού ενός νέου παιδιού και πώς καταφέρατε αυτό να σας οδηγήσει σε δυνάμωμα ψυχής και θέλησης να κάνετε αγώνα και όχι στο φόβο. I never witnessed an amputation. I never saw amputation, never saw it. I saw the after amputation. I saw the man that has already been amputated. With the stony cases, and for me, what has affected me personally had been it's only women that have been convicted to be stoned to death, not men. In my culture, a woman doesn't become pregnant alone. It has to do with a man. So for me, it affected me to go out and defend them, even though they are totally powerless, they are voiceless, they are illiterate, and they are very poor. So that is my motivation, because I was one of them. I was only, I only escaped by a string of a trade to become educated. And I became a lawyer. So for me, the motivation is from inside out. I wasn't paid a dime by anybody to defend those cases. I did it over 100 cases because I believe. Το 2014 η Boko Haram απήγαγε πλέον των 200 κοριτσιών. 2017 σήμερα 
γύρω στα 100 αν δεν κάνω λάθος έχουν απελευθερωθεί και λειτουργήσεται ως μεσολαβητής μεταξύ της Νιγηριανής κυβέρνησης και της Μπόκο Χαράμ. Ε, ποια η τύχη των αγνοωμένων κοριτσιών και πόσο δύσκολο είναι να επιτευχθεί η απελευθέρωση των υπολείπων. So in 2014, I was still at Harvard. I have been at Harvard for the past nine years. And there was a phone call and a recorded message that I should call back a number from the president of Nigeria. I don't know the president of Nigeria. I've never heard of him. I mean, I knew of him, but I've, I don't know him. Mm -hmm. So I said, it must be a prank. It must be fake. So I'm not going to respond. But the following day, I said, it doesn't hurt to call. My guess later was that I have written a book. It's on Amazon. It was a bestseller in Amazon. It's called Practicing Sharia Law. My guess is the government must have seen something similar because I took it to Nigeria and gave it to Ministry of Justice. So I was invited to come to help with the rescue effort of the girls that had been taken by Boko Haram. So during the time that I had been with the meeting, meeting of a meeting, We had access from the president that granted us interview to all the arms of government, all the security arm of government like FBI or CIA in my context. Um, we got a lot of information. We also got a lot of help internationally. At some point when we were in this investigation, I requested to go and visit a prison. And it was through this visit in the prison to see the Boko Haram that had been arrested and kept in the prison that we saw the power of a mother. In the meantime, you remember I told you I did some police work in the past, I was a prosecutor in the past. So some of these skills became handy by asking if I can see the files of those Boko Haram, because they have what they call the first information report I read, and I sought to find the mothers. And it was through the mothers that we brought them to the prison. They didn't know their children are alive. The children didn't know their mothers are in the prison. They took it, they came to visit them. In our culture, a, a boy after 10, 15 doesn't embrace his mother. It's not done. You respect, you bow. She is a very important figure. But when we brought the mothers to the prison, one of the young men ran when he saw his mother. He ran and came and fell and held her and started crying. Now, this young man has been in that prison for more than two years. He had been tortured. Any sort of torturing you can imagine he has gone through. When he saw his mother and was crying, the mother asked him three words. Meyefaru in Hausa. What went so wrong? This is a boy that has been tortured without information extracted. He just started talking. Just, just keep talking. And he gave us a lot of information. I guess it's a build up with the information that they kept gathering after. And I saw the power of a mother in action. <laughs> Ο πολιτισμένος και ισχυρός α, κόσμος, ηγέτες, δεν μπορούν να σταματήσουν αυτές τις θηριωδίες σε γυναίκες και παιδιά. Α, και γιατί πιστεύετε ότι δεν το κάνουν. Nobody uses somebody's eyes to sleep. I use my eyes to sleep, you use your eyes to sleep. So everything is contextual. But for us to be able to achieve this, we have to play several roles. One of them is fighting with superior ideology, and to remove the injustice in the system, where the economy play a part, poverty, hopelessness, lack of opportunity, lack of education, illiteracy, the media, the social media, they are all part of things that we have to juxtapose to be able to come to terms to say, we want to have children, we want to, you and me want to go to bed and sleep with our two eyes closed. But let me say two things here. Violence is not only bad, <clears throat> it's not only dehumanizing a human person, it reduces the person that perpetuates the violence. 
and if we want a society that will be sustained for both the violators and the violated, we must have to come to terms to keep yelling and screaming that violence is not acceptable. In any circumstances, it's not acceptable. Θα ήθελα να στείλετε το μήνυμά σα στι γυναίκε, στι σύγχρονε γυναίκε, στη σύγχρονη γυναίκα που σήμερα κακοποιείται είτε από τον άντρα τη ή από τον σύντροφό τη. Σε my country, in the place where I came from, in my villages, there are no. You know, it's a shame for a man to even yell at his wife. It's, it's shameful. When you move to the south or to other part of the country, the story is not the same. So I want to say, government can address the local government can address local issues. State government should, address, but there should be laws. And I'm saying this. I'm posing there should be laws that slow down violence or even stop it totally. But it takes the society to agree that they want to also do that, to implement it in any society. I think mothers can play a massive role in slowing down violence. That is something I want to mention. We have leaders in different countries that have succeeded as women. When we identify those women, we should not slow them down. When they have the capacity to combine motherhood and leadership, we shouldn't slow it down. When we de degrade women because we think they are women and they cannot offer something to society, I think we bring down our societies. But bottom line, we must stop the violence for the sake of our children, for the sake of our society, and for the sake of human dignity. We have to stop the violence. Thank you very much for being with us.